Download Festival has been going for a long time now, over 20 years. A lot has happened over those two decades. In this video, I'll be exploring the depths of download knowledge, bringing you facts and history in the form of an iceberg video. What's an iceberg video, I hear you say? It's a chart that delivers information about a subject in the form of an iceberg. In this case, we'll be talking about Download Festival. At the top of the iceberg, we have the common information that most people will know. As we go down the tiers, the information or facts will become less known by casual downloaders and should only be known by mega fans. Wet weather. The festival is not known for its great weather and has seen a lot of clouds over the years, but nothing compares to the two wettest years. Although by most download 2016 is remembered as the Drownload year, both 2012 and 2016 are joint for the festival's worst weather, each having a total rainfall of 40.6 millimeters. DLTV DLTV, or Download TV, was an online virtual festival that took place on the same days as the 2020 event was due to take place. Uh, it showed clips of live performances, interviews, and loads of stuff from past years. It was shown on the Download Festival YouTube channel and Facebook page. It wasn't great, but at least it was something. Hybrid Theory in 2014, Linkin Park were convinced by their manager and Andy Copping to play their 2000s mega album Hybrid Theory in full. This was the only time that they did it, another amazing download only exclusive. Hot weather. It's believed that Download 2006 was the hottest on record, reaching temperatures up to 28 degrees. But actually, a new record was set in 2023 when temperatures would reach a whopping 30 degrees during the Saturday. Yes, it was hot. Very loud. During Metallica's performance in 2023, residents reported hearing the sounds of the festival from up to 15 miles away. Most of the complaints came via phone calls to the police. I'm not really sure what they could have done apart from getting on stage and telling them to stop. It was cheap. Back in 2003, when the festival first started, it would set you back a whopping £82.50 for a weekend camping ticket and £39 for a day ticket. Yes, times have changed. Please take me back. 2012. In 2012, the festival's biggest year up to that point, the rain was torrential. Before the festival was due to open on the Friday, health and safety at the event told organisers that due to the amount of mud on the main stage, they couldn't open the arena. A digger had to come in and take off a layer of mud and they had to add tons of hay to appease the gods so the festival could continue. Muller Rice. The unofficial snack of Download Festival 2008 was Muller Rice. The sampling team were offering free pots to festival goers on their way to the arena. Um, most of them ended up on Lethal Bizzle's shirt during his set that year. Seventh Spitfire. Iron Maiden Headline Download in 2013, marking 25 years since their Monsters of Rock appearance at Donington in 1988. To mark the occasion, the band organised a Spitfire TE-311 flyover. Piloted by squadron leader Andrew Milkin, the Battle of Britain Memorial aircraft passed over fans' heads three times before the band launched into Moonchild from their album Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Zipline in 2013, there was a zip line that allows you to fly over part of the main arena. Now that sounds like a cool idea, but not when you have some cheeky downloaders that have loads of bottles using you as target practice. Two stages. The legendary ACDC are the only band to have ever had their own exclusive purpose-built stage at Download. The Aussies insisted on a 65-metre platform featuring a six-tonne train, two sets of cannons 
and a giant bell. The ACDC stage sat to the left of the main stage. Don't get me wrong, it was epic, but it pushed everything else to the right hand side and I hated it. Two thousand and seven. Dano 2007 was quite an important year in the history of the event. It was the last year that the festival took place in its original location. This used by Monsters of Rock from 1980 to 1995 and of course a download from 2003 to 2007. Due to changes at the racetrack, the festival was forced to move from the infield to the current location and has been unchanged since 2009. Dimebag Legendary Pantera guitarist Dimebag Darrell's final UK show was actually at Download. It was in 2004 with his band Damage Plan. Unfortunately, just six months later, the guitarist tragically lost his life while he was gunned down on stage. Long Drops Prior to the portaloos that the festival currently uses as its main facilities, these were considered to be the posh toilets in 2008 as the festival's facilities mostly consisted of the ever dreaded long drops, which were basically a giant vat with holes in, harkening back to something from the medieval times. Secret Set before the release of St Anger, Metallica played a surprise set at the festival in 2003, listed as Not Talica on the backstage call sheets and Everest on the lineup. Their 10 song set was a well kept secret right up to playing. Then word got around the site quickly and an estimated 8,000 fans crammed themselves into the second stage. Snickers Bowl the Snickers Bowl was an Olympic sized swimming pool style skate bowl. It was open to international skate and BMX pros. Uh, the pro comp brought in world class stars such as Rune Gilfberg, Renton Miller, and Koji Craft. The skate side was judged by the godfather of skate and star of the cult documentary Dogtown and the J Boys, Tony Alva. Of course, if you were a fan of BMX or pro skating, this was a really cool addition to the festival. It was to the left hand side of the main stage and it's probably something Download will never do again. Domino's Pizza. There have been many food trucks and companies that have come and gone throughout the years, but none as fondly remembered as the Domino's Pizza van in 2009. Although they looked great, they were insanely expensive, setting you back $15.99 for a large pizza. That being said, Domino's confirmed that over the course of the three days, 6,700 large pizzas were sold. Karaoke Shortly before Korn's appearance in 2006, Jonathan Davis was hospitalised with a blood disorder. The band honoured their commitment to play and enlisted other singers on the bill to help them. They managed to wrangle Avenged Sevenfold's M Shadows, Devil Driver's Des Ferreira, Skindred's Benji Webb, Slipknot's Corey Taylor and Trivium's Matt Heafy. They all performed songs in Jonathan's absence, making it a one-off corn karaoke event uh, and was only experienced by the fans in attendance. Pit Record the Guinness Book of World Records rejected Devil Driver's proposal for the largest circle pit which the band attempted to achieve at Download 2007. Their official response was that unfortunately, as there is no way you can physically define where a circle slash mosh pit starts and ends, they cannot accept it as a category. Dave Grohl Download fans have been aching for the Foo Fighters to play the festival for a number of years now. However, Dave Grohl has actually played the festival before. He performed as part of the supergroup Them Crooked Vultures in 2010, alongside Josh Homme and John Paul Jones. Lars is sick. In 2004, Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich had a health scare en route to the festival and was unable to play. This being the first time he had missed a show in the band's then 23 year history. A replacement for the performance had been sought out, 
they enlisted Slipknot drummer Joey Jordison, Slayer drummer Dave Lombardo, and Lars's tech of 19 years, Fleming Larson. They all stood in to perform Metallica songs new and old. This was a huge one-off experience for the fans in attendance, and Lars hasn't missed a show since. Stephen Sutton Stephen Sutton was diagnosed with terminal cancer in 2012. The 19-year-old attended the festival in 2013 and sadly passed away just weeks before download 2014. The main stage was renamed the Stephen Sutton stage in honour of his immense bravery, dignity, selfishness and his charitable endeavours. Fans also held a minute's applause in his honour. He helped raise almost £4 million for charity. Webcam between 2005 and 2012, you could actually tune into a webcam where you could watch the arena site live for the entire five days. The 2010 time lapse of the entire weekend is still available on YouTube. Suspension Society One played a set on the main stage in 2005. As part of the show, their frontman Matt the Lord Zane performed while suspended by four hooks through his shoulders. He repeatedly swung over the crowd while doing full vocals and did so for the duration of the band's set. Air Guitar Record at Download Festival 2009, Electronic Arts broke the Guinness World Record for the largest number of people simultaneously playing air guitar. The software giant amassed a crowd of 440 brutal legend fans who rocked out to Motorhead's Ace of Spades, beating the previous record of 318 participants. Metallica Debt Metallica played their secret set in 2003, and the fee for that set was $5,000. In an interview with Chris Jericho in 2020, the festival's main booker Andy Copping admitted to never actually paying them. So to this day, Download owes Metallica a debt. Scotland in 2004, the festival had a Scottish leg. At this point, the festival was only two days, and the Scottish event happened two days before the party itself moved on to Donington Park. Ozfest. Ozfest actually paved the way for Download Festival. The year before the first download started, there was an Ozfest at Donington Park. The one-day event proved so successful and inspired Live Nation to put on a regular festival at the site. Thank you, Ozzy. Riots. During Download 2006, Leicestershire police were called to site in the early hours of Monday morning due to multiple fires and destruction of property. The police arrived in full riot gear and were met with missiles and hostility. From someone who was there, it was quite a mad sight. Piles of burning rubbish, bins, metal fences, they were all on fire. Uh, people throwing deodorant cans into the piles and they kept exploding. Uh, also people banging on drums so it sounded and looked literally like the final days of man. Jada Pinkett Smith Jada Pinkett Smith, everyone's favourite actor, has actually played Download Festival. Her band Wicked Wisdom played the festival in the middle of the day in 2006. Will Smith was also present, rocking out on the side of the stage. DV8 DV8 were a pop punk band from Texas. They played the festival in 2005. They are also the youngest band to play at Download. The band was made up of Cash Kelly, who was 14, John Cade, who was 15, and David Spozio, who was 16. Fred Durst. Limbiscuit pulled out of headlining the first ever Download in 2003, just two weeks before the festival happened. Strangely, by not paying Limp Bizkit, the festival actually managed to break even, a rare thing for any festival in its freshman year. This giving the festival the means to continue and look where it is now. So as it turns out, Fred Durst 
save download. So there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. That was a really, really cool video to make. Um, it was enjoyable doing all the research. A lot of that I knew, but there were a few little things in there that were news to me. So hopefully, even if you are a long time downloader, there would have been a few little bits for you in there. And for all of you newcomers, hopefully that would have been loads of really cool historic information about the festival. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'm constantly doing videos like this um, about all festivals but obviously these ones concentrated on download as it's coming up. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you dudes in the next video. You should go and subscribe to my channel just because, come on, subscribe.